up y'all welcome back to my channel serendipity today i'm going to be reacting to why 25 degrees really is hot in the uk did you know no i no i didn't know that 25 degrees is hot in the uk honestly like 25 degrees here is probably like i don't know what it's like 70 degrees fahrenheit that's honestly the perfect perfect temperature i always say i wish it would stay about 70 degrees year round and th if it could stay 70 degrees year round or or at least let the high be 70 this would be the perfect place on earth like it it would just be awesome 70 degrees is like when you know you you open the doors up open the windows up let all the fresh air come in 70 degrees here is feels pretty nice so uh let's get into this video now with the continuing high temperatures in London. Londoners are looking for relief from the stifling conditions. This will hate it, the current heat wave doesn't come without problems. When the UK struggles through a heat wave, temperatures over there can get as high as the mid 30s. For someone like me who deals with this weather for winter, that doesn't sound like much. So do the Brits just need to toughen up? I mean, we've got roads melting here in our summers. We're all used to Jeez. different climates, yes, but there's more to it than that. For starters, the heat wave is relative. Basically, it's different depending on where you are. The World Meteorological Organization loosely defines it as more than five consecutive days of temperatures exceeding the average max by five degrees Celsius. So in the UK, it averages about 20 degrees over the summer months, whereas in Australia, it averages about 30 degrees. This means it doesn't take as high a temperature to trigger a heat wave in the UK. If we look at other cities, in Toronto, their summers are about 25 degrees. A heat wave there is three consecutive days over 32 degrees. And in India, with temperatures around 35 degrees, they wouldn't call a heat wave unless the air temperature reached at least 40 degrees in plains regions. So in Australia and other countries with high summer temperatures, our buildings are built to keep as cool as possible. The concept is nothing new. It's called vernacular architecture, where buildings are designed based on local needs, materials and traditions. Take a look at this house. This is a Queenslander found in, well, Queensland. They're built out of timber and on stumps. The space underneath the house helps cool the building through ventilation. There's always a wide veranda for shading and protection from heavy rains and a corrugated iron roof which is lightweight and durable. And there are plenty of other examples of this type of building for your environment from around the world. This is a house from the Asia province of Saudi Arabia where the temperature is moderate but it rains often. The protruding slates cascade rain away from the clay walls. In the Philippines, Baha'i Kubo huts are built with bamboo, with sufficient ventilation for the hot summer, and raised above the ground to protect against torrential flooding. The igloos of the Inuits, Rondavals in Africa, and Gears in Mongolia. You get the idea. And along with this, there's plenty of other architectural choices made to respond to the environment. Our public spaces include plenty of shaded areas and sufficient ventilation. Not to mention, the majority of the population, about 85%, lives within 50 kilometres of the coastline, where all the major cities have developed. Meaning that even in summer, we'd get a nice sea breeze to help cool down the hot air temperature. But over on the other side of the world, it's not that easy. Keep yourself cool, drink plenty of fluids, keep... Well, that's like, here, it's like, not only is it hot, it's like, just that stagnated hot air because we barely get a breeze we're so far away from like any type of ocean that you're not gonna you're not gonna get any type of sea breeze you're not gonna it's very still air here out of the direct sun in the in the heat of the day uh, and also keep your uh, home as cool as you're able to by using curtains keeping windows open at night and so on did you notice something he didn't mention Air conditioning is not really a thing in the UK. Offices and shopping centres are more likely to have them, but they're not a given the way they'd be here in Australia and other hotter climates. They're just not needed. That's because like how Australian houses are built to keep cool, in the UK and other colder climates, everything is designed to keep the heat in. There aren't many overhanging oh, eaves or awnings or shaded sense. outdoor areas, and most windows are double glazed so that the temperature inside buildings stays as warm as possible during cold winters. Public transport yeah. is another big one. The tube is notorious for its lack of ventilation, which means the heat generated from the trains can't escape the underground system very easily. 
This is fine for an English summer most of the time, but as soon as the mercury starts rising, it becomes a bit unbearable. Yeah, Rest assured, gee, aircon is coming either. to the central line, but in 2030. So only a few years to go then. This is all well and good for part of the year, but on the flip side, when it gets cold in Australia, you really feel it. Yes, even if you're from a place where sub-zero temperatures is normal. Because the houses are designed to perform well in summer, buildings don't really retain much heat. Even though the winter months aren't as cold with averages of about 5 degrees, most houses aren't properly insulated. The large eaves that give you welcome shade in the summer stops that same sunshine from entering in the winter. And of yeah. course, the British homes which heat up during the summer stay nice and warm during the cold winter months. So the actual infrastructure of a city can help the temperature feel hotter or cooler than it actually is. But depending on how long we've lived in a city, our physiology can also affect the way we react to certain temperatures. It's called acclimatization, and it's our body's long-term response to extreme temperatures. So it's not just about sweating when it's hot. It's how our bodies decide when we sweat, how much we sweat, our tendency to sweat, and even the amount of salt in our sweat. It only takes about two weeks for a healthy body to acclimatize, depending on different factors. And it's faster to adapt to heat than to cold. If you're used to a certain range of temperatures, anything outside of that range would feel uncomfortable to you. So both acclimatization and our city's infrastructure affects the way we feel temperature. And while we might think we're good at certain extremes, we could be proven otherwise. So next time you see this, or this, maybe don't be so quick to judge. I'll put some links down below to some sites which will help you build or improve your home to be more environmentally sustainable and energy efficient. And on the topic of interesting architecture, I wanted to leave you all with this weird story I found while researching. This is a car which was melted due to the concave windows of this building in London. Oh yeah, I've heard about that build. That was on some type of show. I think it was like crazy weather or crazy something. Here, I heard about that building. Did that make sense why hot weather in the UK is so bad? It's like, cause you can't escape. You go inside and your house isn't built to, like the woman was saying, like in Australia, it's the way, you know, houses are insulated there is meant to try, you know, more, not as insulated. And while in colder regions, that their homes are more insulated to keep the heat in and the cold out. So when it actually gets hot there, you know, it's really traps all that stuff in. That makes sense. But yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like always, there's more to come and I'll see you in the next one.